<laughs> What's up, guys? We're playing hand signals with Mike. Welcome to another episode of Roll with the Fox, the regular edition. So, guys, before we go on and we have a full program, um, there is a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, oh, man. <laughs> I have too many things, guys. I have something written down. There's just a lot of techniques we're going to try to cover. There's a lot of points I'm going to try to cover as well. Um, guys, as you know, the format is supposed to be interactive. So I, you know I've gotten a lot of questions over the last couple of days. Um, the best way to have your question answered is live. So if you have questions, guys, start start asking them because if, if it's live, it gets precedence over the questions that have been received over the last couple of weeks. So uh, without further ado, I believe this was a question of, uh, uh, from uh, John Koo. I, and I, it, this came like a couple of weeks ago. I, I don't have it on my list, but it just hit me. In the head. That's why I kind of blanked out. So when the guy is sitting out, I believe on top of cross side, but he's facing your legs. So if this happens, first of all, the way Enrique is doing it right now is not necessarily the greatest uh, because his head is, his head is up. If his head is down, this is going to be a lot harder. Um, if his head is up, it's a lot easier. When his head is up, what I try to do is, is almost uh, either cross face with the gi you could actually pull. And once the weight comes off your hips, I can just wrap the head. So even though I don't have a regular triangle, this is quite strong. So usually at that point, Enrique is losing his balance. So I can just transition to the top. Um, Let's go over a couple of scenarios. Again, when the guy's head is up away from your hips, it makes the escape much easier. If it's closer to the hips, down, that's where it's supposed to be, it's going to be much harder for me to escape. So let's look at a couple of scenarios again. So this time he's still, he's sort of sitting there. So guys, you got to add fairly quickly because, you know, he's getting ready to mount. So what I would do is, Nogi, I would try to just kind of cross face to just get him go a little bit back. Uh, with the gi, you can pull and bring up your legs. Once I wrap, guys, I will try to go over my shoulder. Enrique is driving back down, but right now I have an no arm triangle, which may not necessarily save you, but I know for Enrique to get rid of it, he's gonna go north-south. So when he goes north-south, I will try to hug both his legs and sweep him. Sometimes, even if he gets a good uh, So again, so if he goes north south, I will start to use his head to drive him back down. Once I'm here, guys, I don't release until I get another good grip, in, in which case I did. All right. For those of you who have been watching the antivirus edition, you know what I'm going to say right now. Why do you tap so fast? <laughs> so fast. <laughs> he did not stretch. So um, now let's look at it. What happens if his if he's if he's very close to your hips? So again, kind of sitting out to. So if he's close to your hips, what I'm going to try to do is see if I can sort of slide up. If I can slide up, I will. I'd like to uh, wedge myself against his back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go on my shoulder and. Jam my leg through. If this happens, guys, now he has to run. Because now I'm going to be hunting for his back. Okay? So again, um, these are not necessarily the easiest counters. They are available, but you have to set them up. You have to get him to move a little bit. Um, if you're trying to escape bottom of cross side, one of the most important things is to sort of start moving in a way that allows you take, to take advantage of these big escapes these are big escapes but it's uh it's it's not usually sort of uh, you have the guy on top and you just bust out and and you're on top that sometimes can happen but if you training with uh high level guys you need to sort of start to make these micro adjustments before you hit the big escape so the micro adjustments start to basically set up the big escape so let's look at it again So he's sitting out. So what I'm going to do, I want to brace against his back, roll up on my shoulder, and slide my shin in. 
Once I have this, guys, even if he squares, even if he squares up to me, I'm out. All right. Right now, I would probably arm lock him. But if you can, if you can do this a little quicker, so just kind of uh, switch your angling. So, and I start to hunt for his back. All right. So that's a couple of scenarios to escape when the guy is on uh, on uh, on the bottom of cross side where the guy's sitting sitting out kind of facing towards your hips towards your feet. Do we have any questions so far on this, Mike? Uh, Ryan, this was is asking, how do you escape a large opponent who has a neon belly with a wide base? I can't push him enough for the knee bar or get my hips out for an arm bar. Slash back to yes, Ryan. Believe it or not, you're one of the ones on the list. So since you asked it live, you this is this is what's gonna get a, gonna get answered. So, um, let's look at it from this angle so you can kind of see what's going on. I I, I believe this is what you're asking. So normally, if the guy puts a heavy knee on the belly, I bump him forward with the inside leg, and then I just pivot underneath him into a knee bar. Once you do it. A lot. Um, this works very well for a long time, but eventually people start to figure it out. Well, Enrica has figured it out. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm assuming your guy has figured it out. So it's it's a bit interesting because what they do is to counter this, they put less weight on the knee. So a lot of times when I'm on top in Enrica's position, I do the same thing. Once I commit with the knee heavy, you know, it's easy to bump forward. This is, this is very easy to make happen. But once the guy sort of feel like, so now he actually drops to his other knee, so his weight is not on my chest. And the, the reason for that is almost like, it's much harder to bump him forward. So when this happens, I will still sort of bump him forward. And as he's adjusting, my hand comes off, my right hand comes off the hip and I push. When this happens, I will immediately try to attack for the arm lock. But it's necessary to do this, the, the first two steps. The first step is bump forward and then push. Sometimes, you know, you have a high level guy. He actually rips out and starts to go tap, tap. the other way. We've covered this arm armbar transition on uh, on the armbar DVD for BJJ fanatics. But again, now with Enrique, once you have somebody that's high level and has caught on to your sequence, you have to either add another iteration or another step or two to the sequence, or change it up so that way you can kind of continue to go for, go for him, hunt for him. Yes, Mike. He added. He has one grip on the hip and the collar, and he's driving the knee on belly. Oh, <laughs> Enrique is very happy about this. <laughs> Payback. <laughs> <laughs> Payback time. <laughs> oh, man. Do it. It's okay. When he's focused... All his energy is focused on, uh, on, on driving his bases off. So you have to start moving. You have to start moving. If you can't move up, which way do you move? If you can, if, if, guys, jiu-jitsu is very logical. You have to figure out what is the problem. So the problem is I can't move up. There's too much pressure and too much. But that doesn't mean you can't move side to side. So yeah, if, if that happens, you can and you feel like it's just, it's pretty much any escape, any uh, bottom of side control escape is if you can bump him up, move side to side. If you can't move side to side, which way we're gonna go? Down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anana's asking to see it one more time. So, you got somebody that's big and driving into your ribs. So the point is, when he's doing this, all the force 
is he's trying to focus a lot of power here because he wants to punish me. That's okay. So what I'll still do is, is if I feel this, I will bump him forward. So you can see that he starts to wobble a little bit. I push the other way. I bump him forward and say hello to my little friend. This time, that knee bar will come on a little harder because I would like to punish him for try <laughs> trying to bruise my ribs. So do you understand, again, if you have a big problem, subdivide it into smaller problems. So my big problem is a lot of pressure in one, one position. Well, when, that, when he's trying to focus on that one spot, the pressure is focused on that one spot, his base is off. You just got to figure out in which direction. His base is geared towards putting pressure on that one spot. So once, you know, you may have to bump him forward. So I bump him forward. You could see it's pretty easy for Enrique to rebalance. I push him back. Again, he rebalances, but now he's wobbling. He's not straight down. Now he wobbles a little bit, wobbles a little bit more, wobbles, and now I go into action. Yes. And Ryan D'Souza said, I watched it on the DVD also. Highly recommend it to everyone. Incredible details. Nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. Guys, I appreciate uh, all of you guys uh, checking out the, the, the Armbar DVD on BJJ Fanatics. Um, I know you've see, if you've watched me and Enrique and Mike through the antivirus edition, you saw a lot of kind of interesting techniques, especially like when I you know, went after Enrique with, with arm bars. And there's, um, there's a couple of things that truly, I, I'd like to think, like revolutionize potentially some people's games because there's some things that oh, nobody does. I don't know anybody that does these things or they're not being done in, in, in the numbers that they should be done, but they're highly effective. Um, yes, Mike. And uh, Junku uh, Kang is asking... Did I, did I hit your question properly or no? Did I misunderstand it? For Ryan? No, for Junku. Because that was the very first technique that we did. Uh, he's, well, he followed up with, uh, how would you do that in Nogi? Oh, same way. Same way. You know, like, if I have the gi, you can always grab the collar, but in uh, Nogi, just go back to the first, first, uh, remember the first one? So usually if he sits out with the gi, I can grab the, 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 the gi, but just, if you just cross face, all I need is a little bit movement backwards. And now I will lock it up and I will try to drive. Once I'm here, we always end with submission. So, uh, yeah, with the Nogi, it's the same. Uh, if you brace against the guy's back, same thing. All you do is roll up on your shoulder. So sort of, um, let's do it again. So he's sitting out. So this time again. So instead of grabbing the belt, I just put my hand flat, roll up on my shoulder, and bring my... So right now, he's going to be my guard, or if I keep moving, I'm going to be on his back. Yes, we have to always finish with the submission. <laughs> Pardon the interruption. I believe that's a sweep. Since I put him back in guard. So I'd rather wind up with a submission though. And John P is asking about the stockade position. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's on the list. And <laughs> Enrico literally cringed when I mentioned that. So uh, the stockade position, I'm, I'm sort of playing with this a lot. Um, it depends on the person's game. I've uh, uh, When I use it against Enrique, it's effective. Against Mike, not so much. So I'm still playing around with uh, how to position it how to do it but basically I use it I start playing with it from from the top from mount where it's effectively you using your arm um, we I call it stockade because Enrique said hey, you know this this is like that medieval device they used to put people in like this you know in the in town square uh, but he, he didn't remember he didn't remember Amazing. what it was called and I'm pretty sure it was it's probably 3 a.m. Um, I woke up as I 
I remember the name, Stockade. So it's basically a, a, a bit of a, uh, um, almost like a crucifix style grip. Uh, you can use it defensively, you can do it offensively. Um, so you can use it from top across side. Um, you can use it from the mount. So when I mount, usually I, I threaten Ezekiel, he defends, and I, it's much hard, it's very hard. If I can't actually, but you gotta be careful, I drive my fist through the floor. Because right now, Enrique is pretty much immobile. So it's gonna be easy. Let me just submit him. Um, I started playing with it defensively from having a guy pass my guard. Um, guys, anything that could potentially manipulate the spine, uh, you have to be very careful with. Uh, you have to do it against, you know, trusted or, or with trusted training partners. Because if you try to do it hard on somebody that's relatively new, uh, you, you might p possibly, you know, tweak their neck and they're going to be like this. Guess what? Somebody goes to, a, to an academy and, and uh, that happens first or second day. They may not be coming back. All right. So uh, defensively, again, as she's passing my guard. So... I will try to. I will try to drive. If he, if he retracts that arm, that's okay because I'm sort of coming out the back. Um, a lot of times, I will threaten this as he's driving, and I come out again the back way. And as you know, everything must end in submission. <laughs> Guys, again, this is one of the things that we talk about on the armbar DVD. Notice that I'm not putting my left leg over Enrique's head. Um, I found those arm locks where you don't necessarily bring, let's call it an outside leg, over the guy's head, whether it be from the guard or be from uh, mounting position or cross side position. It, not every instance, but a lot of instances. First of all, it's a lot tighter entry, and it stays tight, whereas if you try to bring the leg over, uh, that's when things loosen up enough for him to either try to hit a hitchhiker escape or reverse hitchhike, like just go back and forth until they escape. All right. So we keep going. Unless we have some. We have uh, Masij is asking, my question is, uh, I have a Kimura grip before the arm bar in the perpendicular inverted position from bottom. Opponent is on his knees. How would you finish the inverted armbar? You go belly, belly down with the spinning arm hitter. Okay. Instead of arm raising arm hitter. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me see. Okay. So from like bottom, when you do it. Yeah. So you go belly down forward. Then you have a Kimura yeah. grip. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, the Kimura grip is. You could, with the Kimura grip, it's always easy to, to disengage. Um, Kim, stay here. Kimura grip is very effective. You know, it's two on one, it can torque the shoulder, but if I'm going specifically for this finish, so if I'm going for the, for the inverted armbar, what I would try to do is, because both my hands are tied up right now on his arm, I don't need that. So as, once I do this, I'm more interested in either finishing uh, or making sure that I can, I have one of the arms to tr try to grab his leg, all right? So again, one of the big things is you, most often you don't need both hands. So if you have a Kimura grip, you can always let go of one or the other. So right now, I would probably, this, this would be my preferred course of action. This is so tight that there's almost no escape. Tap, tap, tap. So I would keep that grip. It's a good grip for control. Um, but once you're there, uh, it actually might hinder your, your, um, your arm bar finish. And the reason for that is if he actually rolls. So let's do it again. To the side. So if I have this grip and I've tried to finish, yeah, I would probably just take his back. You know, because I usually, when I, when I go for arm bars, 
I usually like to have one hand free. The only time I will uh, go to both hands on one is if, if I need to joystick grip and I need to be able to, so, uh, it's, so I can switch direction very quickly. But usually if I'm setting things up, I don't, I'm a, less concerned about the arm and more concerned about the control. Again, that is one of the big points that I mentioned on the DVD. I should, I should pay myself. Her cost to give myself a shout out. Uh, so, uh, one of the big points again is, is usually, I don't worry about the arm as much. I just, I'd like to have it controlled, but I'm more interested in controlling his, where he goes, how he moves, and the arm is usually almost always there. And if I had a, a preferred grip, I usually like to have the armpit grip. Once I get the armpit grip, guys, it's, it's, it's pretty much over. Um, yes, Mike. And Adolfo has two questions. Uh, first one is Fox. Speaking of being careful, cranking necks and spines, when I attempt the no-gi baseball bat choke from top of cross side, I feel like I'm cranking their head up versus choking. Is this not correct? It is not correct. I'll tell you a funny story from yesterday. So I tried to, you know, uh, guys, we always, uh, we're doing this monthly. We did it monthly before the lockdown. We did every single day. During the lockdown, we're back to monthly. Now Mike and Enrique tried to convince me to go weekly. Uh, I agreed to it, guys. If, I said, once we hit 10,000 subscribers, we're gonna go weekly. Uh, so, you know, because monthly, it's, it's sort of like, it's like a big, uh, you know, weekly people are sort of, get used to the sort of same time, same 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 place, um, same bat channel. Uh, it's actually sort of Fox Beach AJ channel. Uh, so, we're close to, we're not that far from 10,000, but guys, help us get to 10,000. We're going to go weekly because I think it's going to be easier for people to, to remember and, and tune in. Uh, so yesterday, when it's monthly, I sort of tried to put a post and remind people, hey, we're, we're back on. I tried to tag Adolfo. By the way, Adolfo is, is the guy that's responsible for putting up the, the, the index of all the techniques that we covered in 99 episodes. So 99 episodes time, there's, prob there's at least 50, 60 hours of techniques. So Adolfo put the index together, and I, I couldn't tell him. I said, man, maybe he's not on Facebook anymore. Turns out I wasn't friends with him, <laughs> which I did not realize. So I, 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 I remedied that quickly. <laughs> so basically, I deleted some of that. And some, I just go, go through some, some fr friends and electronic friends if they're an active account and delete it. So I fixed that. So anyways, let's look at how you should be baseball bat choking people. Everybody's right. excited about the possibility of weekly. They said they're going to help spread the word. Perfect. Guys, it's good. that's good because it, it is an addition. Like today, I'm like scrambling, trying to answer the last minute questions as I'm, as I'm driving up towards Butler. So, guys, so when you're choking somebody, baseball bat choke. So when I'm here, my left hand is in position already. It's going to be... I don't go high up on his spine or high up on his skull rather. I'm basically underneath and my forearm is flat. Once the second hand comes in, no fingers, I connect. And that, so I back off. So say for example, I'm, I just passed the guard, I swim in and then I, I bring my weight So. I make a connection, so I make a connection, I bring the second hand in, and when I bring my elbow sort of in the middle of my chest, I bring the pressure down. That causes a true constriction rather than uh, uh, an amateur spinal adjustment, let's call it that, <laughs> amateur chiropractic college. So uh, that's what you want, you want a true compression. So again, you don't want to hear any crackling in your, in your training partner's neck. So I'm, I'm here, I might have knee on the belly. Guys, notice that when I have a knee on the belly, sometimes I, I, I personally prefer from an offensive uh, standpoint, not have a lot of weight. I just kind of keep it there to slow down his movement. So I bring knee on the belly, connect, and then I bring. So I'm not trying to lift his head, I'm trying to compress. That's the best way to uh, 
to uh, do the baseball bat choke. I personally like baseball bat choke no gi, even with the gi. The entry is much easier, much quicker. You know, uh, oh, we got, we're down to five minutes. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Guys, we have a lot of other uh, questions. Let me answer one more. Uh, and then I want to address sort of the issue of, of training partners uh, before we run out of time. So uh, this was from uh, uh, Australia. I, I forgot. I, there was only so much room on the paper. I didn't write everybody's name. So um, it's, it's, you know, when you're on top of cross side, I was asked, how would I counter uh, if the Marcelo style arm push? So uh, usually I'm, when I'm here, guys, I usually try to keep my arm high and my um, right arm by his, by his hips or up his, uh, upper thighs. But in order for this to happen, so when that happens, guys, I will just spin, I will just pivot around. So almost, guys, if you feel like you got caught in a in a in a, in a movement, there's there's a couple of different things you could do. This is just a general principle. If you get caught in something, there's basically two ways to to counter it. Uh, one is to stop it, which is hard, especially if the guy's bigger and stronger or, or actually started earlier. And the other one is to try to change how you position. So you kind of make the guy almost either overshoot or undershoot or change sort of the, the direction that he's pushing. So now suddenly the direction he's pushing is not where he wants to go. Anytime that happens, the guy tends to back off because he knows that he just overshot. So again, if I feel that, that happening, so I pass, let me just go. I just, I just sort of go north south. If I can stop it, from here, guys, I will drop directly back into an arm bar. So, again, it's almost uh, advisable when you feel something happening. Again, if I can't stop it, I, try, I aim to overshoot him. Or change the angle so much that the, the way that it, in, in, in sort of in that direction that he was trying to push no longer is the direction that he desires. All right? Um, so guys, uh, there's a lot of good, really good, uh, good groups that are popping up of BJJ over 30, BJJ over 40, BJJ over 50. Um, guys, you should be worried when we go BJJ over 80. <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make, yeah. Um, so there's always a lot of questions about how to train. How many days a week should you train? How heavy should you train? Should you lift a lot of weights? Uh, should you have training partners? One of the things that people seem to desire, and, and I, I believe these groups are amazing because they provide support. You know, there's, uh, you know, literally members all over the world and provide support and ideas to each other. I'll tell you my personal philosophy of who, you know, how to choose your training partners. If you're slightly past middle-aged. Uh, grappler so if you know it, it's a function of how long you've been training so if you have been training a long time you develop almost like a second intuition on how to move if you haven't been training a long time so say you got two guys 60 years old and they're both blue belts uh, should they train together my answer is probably not because if you have not been training very long your movement is not going to be super smooth yet uh, it's not going to be it, it's it, it can become a little bit rougher now if your mobility is impacted you know whatever uh, it, it's sort of similar to when two people are injured should you put two people that are injured training together no it should always be one healthy and sturdy I, I I would recommend the same approach to to people that are again somewhat past middle age, to try to find a sturdy guy that's younger. And the reason for that is it, it needs to be also a guy that kind of understands that, you know, when you accidentally stepped on his head or accidentally elbowed him somewhere, it's not intentional. And they kind of give you a little bit of, of, a, of, a, of a pass to 
to do that because they understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to get better. You're trying to get smooth. And those guys, they can usually take a little bit of punishment without retribution. To me, that is the best partnership you can have. Sometimes it's good to have two guys uh, that are similar age and, and similar stiffness or, or not necessarily high level of technique yet or, or kind of try to play this kind of game. But a lot of times uh, I see that uh, that becomes a, possi a better possibility for injury than if you had a 30-year-old kind of sturdy blue belt that sort of is a good training partner. So I know some of the people say, oh, you know, they're the only one in their, in, their, in their school, in their academy, you know, that age, and they have a hard time finding training partners. I'd like, I I'd recommend you try to reach out to the younger crowds and try to find a couple of preferred training partners because I think they'll help you progress. And what I try to develop in my school where we have sort of guys that are a little bit older, professional, they, a lot of times they provide, uh, you know, advice to some of, some of the younger guys that, that are good and and sort of life advice you know they sponsor my guys when they fight and guess what the younger guys should be doing helping them improve and it becomes a symbiotic relationship and I believe that way of training will be more rewarding for you and and hopefully it result in less injuries I hope that answers some of those questions because there's a lot of posts on that and just like that we're out of time so guys, uh, I don't even know what episode this is, guys. I don't, I don't know. 13? It's not wrong. Oh, when you said like this, I thought 13. Okay, 12 it is. <laughs> I'm not sure. My, <laughs> guys, my mind is on jiu-jitsu. It's not on numbers. So uh, I did check what time the next, the next one, I believe, is Friday, October 2nd. And let's see how long it takes before we uh, wind up going to weekly. Uh, my biggest concerns, guys, about going to weekly is, is, is uh, because once things open up, I will be traveling. So if I'm traveling, I, you know, we may need to pre-record uh, a, a, an episode. Or you need to take us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea, okay? It's not a bad idea. <laughs> I'll bring the stand. So uh, that's my biggest concern, guys, but I think I can get over it. So... Guys, we'll see you next time. Tune in to episode 13 on October 13th? Second. 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 Guys, Second. like, share, subscribe. Oh, yes. Tell your friends <laughs> to help us reach 10K subscribers on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>